Hey guys, welcome to the moon video on immune response. If you could find on, I don't know what page, mine's page 15, yours might not be the same. There's a section called immune response with six steps or seven steps as a box. If you can find that, we're going to go and type in there. So we're going to talk about the difference between antibodies and antigens. Um, this will make more sense when we talk about types of blood cells, but essentially the difference is, is you have to understand that an antibody are Y-shaped proteins. So there are these things right here. And antigens are these guys right here that have special markers that match the antibodies. So if you can see that this matches this and this matches this. So please keep that in mind as we go through this video. Again, it'll make a lot more sense when we talk about types of blood. So we have a bunch of different types of white blood cells. So if you could make a quick jot of your notes down. Um, this is not in your notes, but it is a good to have. So if you could grab a separate piece of paper or just jot it somewhere in your book. Essentially, we have a bunch of players in the game of immune response. We have the lymphocytes, which are the B cells, which create antibodies. We have monocytes, which are known as macrophages that they engulf and, engulf and essentially eat the bacteria. We have something called a helper T cell, which makes copies of the antigen to show to our B cells. Again, antigens and to antibodies. We have our suppressor, suppressor T cells, which are kind of the stopping mechanism of the process. And then we have our memory T cells, which remember all the antigens and the antibodies so they can produce something faster next time. So then last but not least, we have the oh, killer T cells. Oh, sorry guys. That essentially um, jump into the game to help try to kill off uh, old, mutated, or cancerous cells. So we're going to start with essentially the first line of defense. So this is step one. The first line of defense is to protect our bodies from war invaders at all time. We have their first step of defense, which is the following things. And I lied, this is not your first box. This is just general information that, again, you could write down on a separate piece of paper. So we need to remember that our body already has natural defenses that keep things out. Skin, stomach acid, the mucus in our nose or snot, nose hairs to tingle when something goes up our nose, so we sneeze it out. Cough because of the cilia lining our trachea. Earwax catches um, bacteria that try to enter that way. And tears wash away stuff out of our eyes. So if the first line of defense doesn't work, then what happens is, is we get sick. So inside our body, there's a reaction that has to occur. So step one in the immune response is of the following. So this goes in the very first box of step one. We have a foreign invader with antigen markers on the surface entering the body. Okay, so you can draw that. Now, something else that you can add is that a white blood cell will notice this and starts kind of migrating its away over there. Um, because of so many white blood cells in one area, that actually uh, increases the temperature in that area. So that's why when something is infected, it feels like it's swollen or that it's really warm. It's because of all the white blood cells that are compacting in that area. But for this purpose, you can just draw this picture with this statement underneath. In step two, we have what's called the macrophage engulfing the foreign invader. So it eats essentially the bacteria, and then it rips off all the antigens that were on the bad guy, that bacteria, and pushes it out to the surface of the bacteria. So again, you're going to draw this and write the statement underneath. In the third response step to the third step to this response, we have something called a helper T cell. So the helper T cell will touch the antigen and make a copy of the antigen marker. Okay, so it comes along, touches it, and goes, okay, this is what it looks like. It then goes over and finds a B cell or an antibody cell or a lymphocyte. All right, so in uh, step four, we're drawing a B cell who's talking to the uh, T cell, essentially, and they're trying to make antibodies to help fight this infection. So in step five, the antibodies that were made by the B cell go back to the macrophage, attach themselves to the antigen on the outside of the macrophage, and essentially taser the antigen so that they're defenseless. So they pretty much destroy the antigens on the surface of the macrophage. In step six, the antibodies then uh, 
oh, sorry, that's not supposed to say that. So essentially in step six, uh, the antigens are now rendered safe to eat and the macrophage engulfs it. This I forgot to change guys. So just essentially say the antigens are neutralized and we can now take them into the white blood cell. So in the very last step here, we have the suppressor T cell stopping the response. We don't want this response to continue going on and on and on. That would be horrible. Okay, we just want to stop, neutralize the bacteria, get rid of it and move on. Once that's happened though, we have something called a memory, memory T cell and it remembers that antigen. So next time you get sick or that invader comes in, our antibodies are made much faster than the first time. So we don't remain sick for as long or we don't get sick of it at all. And that's kind of the idea of why we get vaccines is so that that memory T cell has already seen the foreign invader and we can get rid of the influenza, for example, faster than if we didn't have the vaccine. So that's essentially the immune response. Um, we are gonna go through it again in a little bit more detail and it will make again more sense once we've talked about red blood cells and antigens and antibodies. But if you could get those seven steps into your notes, that would be great.